And now let us pray. Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, you breathe life into all things, and you nourish your whole creation. You are a rock and a refuge for your people, for you are trustworthy in all things. Your desire for peace with justice can never be defeated. You alone can bring life out of death and restore wholeness to broken lives. So we praise you and rejoice in the hope that you offer. For your love is the power at work in every situation, seeking goodness and revealing truth, a love that will never let us go. And so in our time of worship, we offer you our love and our loyalty through Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. God of our hopes and our hearts, you provide the gift of faith, but we lose heart so quickly. Troubles weaken our trust and disappointments eat away at our commitments. Forgive us, forgive us and create in us a clean heart and that in your love you would give us peace and perseverance. Amen. Friends, remember the promise that St. Paul declares. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Hardship, distress, peril, or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through a God who loves us. For neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Let us rejoice, so that no matter what is happening around us or to us, no matter what we have done, God's deep love will never let us go. Know this day that we are forgiven, and for that we say thanks be to God. Amen. Our first reading this morning is taken from the Hebrew Bible, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 27 to 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of humans and the seed of animals. And just as I have watched over them to pluck up and break down, to overthrow, destroy, and bring evil, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days they shall no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge, but all shall die for their own sins. The teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be set on edge. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Amen. And our epistle reading this morning is taken from the book of 2 Timothy, beginning at chapter 3, verse 14, and continuing into chapter 4, ending at verse 5. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires, 
and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. Amen. And our sung response this morning is number 579, 75 rather, Lead Me, Lord. <laughs> 